On paper, adapting a famous character to the big screen should be the easiest way to make money. We know Sherlock Holmes, Captain Kirk, and Spider-Man are universally beloved, which is why Hollywood keeps pumping out adaptations of these iconic heroes. And even if one of these films doesn't do well, then so what? It's not the end of the world. If the property gets stale, studios can just put a different spin on it or cast a new actor to inject life into a role. However, there are some legendary characters out there who have rarely, if ever, been done right on the big screen. With that in mind then, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are eight iconic characters movies keep screwing up. Number eight, Robocop. The 1980s had a hefty supply of fast-paced and intelligent action films, including Aliens, Predator, The Terminator, and Die Hard. And who could forget about Robocop? Even though the story of a dead cop turned into a cyborg sounds kind of dumb on paper, Paul Verhoeven turned this idea into a fast-paced, thought-provoking satirical masterpiece. In fact, Robocop has become such a defining character in cinema, it's easy to forget that he has had a grand total of one good movie. Not only did the sequels and reboots suck, but the four TV series, yes, four TV series, are borderline unwatchable. Unlike other entries on this list, it is tricky to pinpoint why so many of the adaptations failed, though. The sequels and even the remake weren't just generic action flicks and did maintain the satirical aspects of the original, and yet they just didn't work. Number seven, the Universal Monsters. In the early 20th century, Universal's creature features ruled the theaters. They were so profitable, in fact, that Frankenstein's monster, Dracula, the Invisible Man, the Wolfman, and the Mummy regularly crossed over with each other, conjuring the first cinematic universe into being. Unfortunately, the Universal Monsters lost its appeal during the early 1960s and has never really recovered since. Over the last half a century, a decent adaptation of the studio's classic characters is released like once a decade. But when the Marvel Cinematic Universe took off, Universal saw a golden opportunity. Since shared universes were all the rage, the studio believed that it was the perfect time to forge another shared universe of their iconic monsters once again. Sadly, this plan tragically backfired almost immediately. The first installment, Dracula Untold, was so forgettably generic that you probably forgot about it until right now. Instead of learning the error of their ways, though, the studio tried again, hoping their reboot of The Mummy would kick off their so-called Dark Universe. However, the film tried so hard to emulate Marvel's formula and humor that people who didn't even see the movie could smell the desperation from a mile away. Although a smorgasbord of follow-ups were planned, everything was scrapped when The Mummy was a major dud. But this former titan is not dead yet. After the Dark Universe dissolved, Universal took initiative and greenlit an Invisible Man adaptation that focused on telling a compelling story rather than setting up sequels and spin-offs. And you know what? It was a bloody good time. So if the studio keeps looking at their properties like this, there is a chance that the Universal monster films can recover. Number six, Pinhead. The Hellraiser franchise declined so quickly that the biggest fans of Clive Barker's work may be oblivious to just how many installments there actually are. And there are 10 in case you're wondering. Although the first two entries were well received, every follow-up is pretty much god awful. The last six sequels were so dreadful in fact that they didn't even warrant a theatrical release. To understand why the series keeps failing, then we need to look back at when it succeeded. The very first Hellraiser blew viewers away with its cerebral gore, intelligent writing, expansive world building, inventive monster designs, and genuine scares. But what really put this movie on the map was Doug Bradley's towering performance as the Hell Priest, better known to you and me as Pinhead. This grid-faced demon is the film's defining character despite only having 10 minutes of screen time. And that's kind of the key. The soul-tearing entity appeared just enough to showcase his power, but was never overused in the first installment. And even though the character works best when used minimally, studios kept shoving him into every scene in the sequels, completely ruining what made the character stand out in the first place. Number five, John Connor. The Terminator launched James Cameron's career and turned Arnold Schwarzenegger into the biggest name in Hollywood almost overnight. Terminator 2 Judgment Day though went one step further and is not just regarded as the perfect sequel, but among one of the greatest movies ever made. 
Then, some studio tried to recapture that magic with Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, and while it wasn't a great movie by any stretch, it was the last time that John Connor, the supposed savior of humanity, was actually an interesting complex character. Since then, every take on John Connor has been incredibly generic, with the writers being unable to make the transition from flawed would-be hero to outright hero. Even great actors like Christian Bale haven't been able to present a definitive version of this character. And it doesn't look like we'll be getting another shake anytime soon either. Because the franchise has been botched four times now and Terminator 7 is officially cancelled, well, until the next inevitable reboot, it's clear that the Terminator name will never be the same as it once was. Number four, Robin Hood. No matter how popular a movie genre or franchise is, people can always grow tired of it. Silent films, Flash Gordon, and westerns dominated screens at one time, but now struggle to find an audience. But one story that has endured longer than almost any other is Robin Hood. The British ballad is over 700 years old, and yet, modern audiences are still fascinated by the heroic archer who robs from the rich and gives to the poor. Because his swashbuckling adventures feel timeless, you can understand why Robin Hood has been adapted to film and television literally dozens of times. And yet, the bad adaptations far outweigh the good. In fact, it's difficult to think of the last Robin Hood film that was even decent. The 2018 version was a travesty, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves achieved the impossible by making the titular outlaw boring, and not even the great Ridley Scott could churn out a decent film about the legendary outlaw. As depressing as it is to admit then, the three best adaptations are actually The Adventures of Robin Hood, which is 84 years old, the Disney version, and the parody Robin Hood Men in Tights. Number three, The Fantastic Four. If you ask any group of people which is the best Fantastic Four film adaptation, there's always going to be someone who'll answer with The Incredibles. And that might sound like a joke, and it kind of is, but it is also surprisingly accurate, as Brad Bird's Pixar film captures the dynamic of the superhero quartet better than any Fantastic Four movie has yet. The studio behind the 1994 Fantastic Four movie had so little faith in the project, in fact, that they never even released it, nor even intended to. They only made a Fantastic Four feature in the first place to keep the film rights for the property. The 2005 version, which actually did get released, was similarly a minimal effort project, hampered by sloppy CGI, weak acting, and a bland script. The follow-up, Rise of the Silver Surfer, wasn't much better either, and Josh Trank's gritty reboot was so shoddy that it actually made viewers defend Batman and Robin. Even though Marvel's first heroes have had a lot of bad luck, fans are still optimistic about the future. Now that Marvel Studios have snagged the rights to adapt the property, the company can finally, hopefully, deliver a Fantastic Four film that's actually fantastic. Number two, Dark Phoenix. The Dark Phoenix plot in X-Men centers around founding member Jean Grey being corrupted by a cosmic entity called the Phoenix Force. After she becomes a galactic threat, the X-Men are forced to face her in battle, resulting in her death. The tale is so monumental, in fact, that it's no surprise that it's been adapted to the big screen multiple times. But what is surprising is how the filmmakers have totally screwed up this story twice. X-Men 2 concluded with the Dark Phoenix plot being set up, but the script for the next installment, X-Men The Last Stand, was majorly revised, turning the most iconic X-Men story into a mere subplot. So when Jean Grey was reintroduced in the prequel, X-Men Apocalypse, it looked like the franchise could finally redeem itself with this character. Sadly, the follow-up, X-Men Dark Phoenix, didn't work either, somehow making all the same mistakes as X-Men 3. Because we barely had a chance to get to know this version of Jean, we didn't really care what happened to her, and the plot and character was totally wasted once again. Number 1. Everyone in Resident Evil To the surprise of many, Paul W.S. Anderson's Resident Evil did better critically and financially than most video game adaptations. But after his series had five derivative sequels, fans were eager to see another filmmaker take a crack at adapting Capcom's legendary video game franchise and, you know, actually adapt it properly this time. 
See, while Paul W.S. Anderson's movies are enjoyable, they do not care for the source material at all. And as a result, iconic game characters like Leon S. Kennedy and Chris Redfield are reduced to in-name-only cardboard cutouts who resemble nothing of their gaming counterparts. However, the reboot Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City looked like the Resident Evil adaptation fans deserved, directly adapting the first two games with iconic characters like Leon, Jill, Chris and Claire being brought to the forefront this time around. But not only was Raccoon City another hack job, the characterization itself was somehow even more embarrassing. This time around, Leon Kennedy was turned into a cowardly wimp, Birkin was forgettable, and Wesker was totally, totally wasted. Years ago, Anderson was unanimously viewed as the guy who destroyed Resident Evil, but upon reflection, at least his work was entertaining while he was messing up the law. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think of these versions of these characters? And are there any that Hollywood has totally messed up in your eyes? Let me know. And while you're down there, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.